What's up everybody? My name is uh, Awok. I'm one of your TAs for EC16 this quarter. And in this video we're going to do a quick unboxing of the kit that you've ordered from Eureka Lee. So throughout the quarter you'll expect to see these, some of these video lectures. And we'll cover various topics that will be helpful for you throughout the quarter. Uh, a next video that you guys could be expecting will be a quick little soldering tutorial just in case some of you may not have soldered before. And uh, yeah, let's get straight into it. So this is the kit that you should have received from Eureka Leap. So you'll see a little sticker for UC San Diego and the name of the class and the class number, EC16. So let's get started. Yeah, so the first thing you'll see is a little Eureka Leap sticker, you know, shameless advertising. Uh, and then you'll see a little parts list. Uh, so I would hang on to this, uh, not so much so for the actual, like, bomb breakdown, like the bill of materials, but rather the little resistor code at the bottom. This will be helpful for you when you're creating your circuits to identify what resistances the, uh, your various resistors are, because they're not going to be labeled. Alright, and so the first thing we see here is the soldering kit. So, let's open this guy up. Alright, and so the first thing you'll see is a solder sucker. So this will be useful if you need to remove any of your solder joints that you've done on your various sensors. So this will, we'll get back into this once you've uh, soldered. We'll cover this a little more in the video. But if you see these parts, so this is your Spark Fun Thing Plus. You can see these little uh, connections. And so let's say you solder on a pin and you realize, oh, like this is not a good job, I want to redo it. Uh, that's where the solder sucker, solder sucker would come into play. So we'll get back into that. So this is your little solder sucker. Yeah, and so we'll talk about using these things uh, in another video. All right, the next thing we have is the actual soldering iron itself. Um, and so these guys are, you know, they're not the greatest, but uh, it should get the job done uh, for what we need in this class. Yeah, so if you guys have like your own soldering irons at home, like myself, I uh, have my own Hakko uh, soldering iron, you know, feel free to use that, but this is just in case. Um, it's not common for students to have their own soldering irons. So we wanted to make sure we get you guys an affordable one so that it wouldn't raise the cost of the class. Um, but make sure you guys can still have your, your iron. Alright, so let's see what else we got. Uh, so this is, I think this is a little advertisement for some of the other stuff that the company has. Uh, let's put this aside, not too important. This is your instruction manual for soldering. Uh, so this is actually for soldering um, surface mount components. Uh, it doesn't look like they talk about soldering uh, through hole, which is what we'll have. Uh, but don't worry, we'll cover it. Oh, I see there's some of it here. So you can see they go through some instructions. Uh, this will be helpful for you guys if uh, on top of the video we'll have. Uh, but you don't need to worry about surface mount soldering since we don't have any surface mount components. Uh, but if you do end up go going into industry, uh, you'll most likely be working with surface mount uh, components, just so you're aware. Uh, so this is uh, lead-free solder. Uh, once again, if you guys have your own solder, uh, maybe you have leaded soldering, which is honestly pref usually preferred in industry. It's much better. Uh, but of course, we don't want to be shipping around leaded components in California because it becomes a big issue. Uh, but once again, if you guys have your own leaded solder, uh, feel free to use it. So this is copper wick. This is again to remove already soldered components. So this can be helpful with through hole as well, uh, but generally you'll use copper wick if you're solder desoldering surface mount components, where you know, the solder is on a single surface rather than through the board itself. Uh, once again, this could also be helpful. So we'll just you know, pull this out, and there's your copper wick. And so you'll place the copper wick on the board and heat it up, and then it should absorb the solder. And Let's see what else we have. We have a little sponge. And uh, this is interesting. 
Oh, this looks like this is a holder for the soldering iron. I'm assuming something like that. Yeah, that looks about right. Fun stuff. All right, well, that's everything in the solder kit. So let's move this stuff aside. All right, so let's get into with the other components. So this is your Spark Fun Thing Plus. This is your market controller unit. This is the board. We've used various ones uh, throughout you know, the years of teaching EC16. Uh, this seems to be a very, very popular market controller. Uh, we have also uh, chosen it because of that actual processor that's on board. And we'll get more into that in the labs. So in lab one, we kind of talk about you know, why, why this processor, what's, what's so you know, special about this specific microcontroller unit. Um, but it's a, solid, it's a good unit. It has a lot of good features. And you'll be using this a lot throughout the quarter. Uh, we have our OLED display. Uh, so this will be connected uh, to your microcontroller. And you can you know, print various different things on the OLED. Like you can print you know, like a string. Let's say you're watching a, like a variable, like, an image, like a counter. You, know, you can print the time, you know, just a standard uh, display. And again, like a lot of these components and sensors, uh, we'll go more into in depth in the actual labs. When we're introducing these sensors, we'll talk about what they are, when, what they're used for, and then how to use them. Uh, so don't worry, don't worry about that too much in this video. Again, this is just an unboxing to show you uh, what you should expect to see in the kit. So this is your pulse sensor. That is a little uh, an LED. So it does red, green, and infrared light. And this is basically going to be used uh, for measuring your heart rate. Uh, here we have a three-axis accelerometer. So you can see here. There's a little, you know, let's see if we can get this out of the bag. Um, but you can see here there's a little no notation that, you know, marks the X, X, Y, and Z direction. Uh, we have uh, so some other various components. So you see we have two push buttons here. Uh, we have the vibrating motor. And then we have uh, a header pin, male header pin. Uh, and so they, these are, this is mainly what you're going to be soldering. It'll be, you know, you'll be connected to, here, let's get this going out here, get out the spark fun thing plus, yeah. You know, if you guys haven't used spark fun a lot, uh, I would definitely suggest using spark fun. They have a lot of great stuff. Um, they have a lot of great, even like, uh, equipment that spark fun has. It's really good quality and it's very reasonably priced. Uh, so you can see here, kind of the idea of what you would expect. So you know you'll kind of run it through, and I'm not. I don't have. I want to break this just yet. Uh, we'll go into that in the actual soldering video. But you know you'll just run these through the, these holes, and that's that's mainly the soldering that you're going to be doing for this class is soldering on these headers so you can get it onto the breadboard. Yeah, and so we'll stick these in as well. So yeah, you know, the push buttons. And then there's the vibrating motor. All right. Uh, so these are your resistors. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, they're not numbered, they're not labeled, uh, and so that's why that resistor guide here is going to be really important. Uh, you know, if you if you do lose the sheet, uh, it's not the end of the world. You can always go on Google and you know find find your own, but you just have to be mindful because you know sometimes like, different ones use different coloring and labels um, so I would definitely stick with this one because this is the one that the Yuri Gui people printed for you based off of the resistors they've sourced um, but once again if you do lose this you know you can we can get another one for you I could just find another uh, diagram um, but like I said you as you can see they're not numbered so you'll be using this diagram and this color code combo to determine what the resistances are yeah um, and uh, generally speaking uh, see if you and if you use SMD components like this, this system changes. Like there's no color combos. It's usually numbered, um, like a specific code that they write onto the actual chip itself. If it's big enough, some of the smaller components they don't even have that. So you really kind of have to be smart and keep them in the bags themselves. And the bags will have like the, will have the sticker, the print on it. Let's say you order from DigiKey, and that'll specify what the resistances are. 
But if you're working with through-hole components, this is how you identify what your um, resistance is. Luckily, uh, capacitors, which actually we don't work with in this class, uh, will actually have their capacitance printed on the, on the capacitor itself. So this is a proto board, as you can see here. Uh, so we have it's individual holes, and as it may be hard to note in, in this video, but you'll see on your actual kit that none of these are actually connected. They're all individual parts. And so, say you want to build a circuit on here, you actually need to bridge connections uh, if they're either next to each other with solder or if they're further apart with wires. Um, but this is generally how you, uh, proto boards work. Out of fruit uh, sometimes sells proto boards that actually kind of work like breadboards, where you have, you know, the power pins down the side are connected, and then you have five in each row that are connected. Um, but the, this is uh, every single, you know, every single pad is disconnected you know, from each other. There's no connections, uh, and this is kind of why this is part of the reason why people use go with like PCBs is in, in the sense that you know those traces and those connections are made. At, you know, at the time of fabrication. But you know, for this, you will bridge individual connections together. Here, uh, this, is, you know, this is your breadboard. Uh, so again, you have the power rails on the side. And so open this up, it should be easier to see. But yeah, you're gonna have your power rails on the side, so you see plus and minus. Uh, obviously, it's not enforced. Like if you put minus and plus, it's you know, not like the breadboard's gonna fry. Uh, but this is marked so you can be consistent with notation because that's you know all, all, all one of the most important things you can do in engineering is consistency you know it's you know power is red ground is black you you keep these things consistent because you know if you have a really large circuit and you've started mixing those colors together you have a chance you know let's say i don't know it's midnight or 1 a.m and you're working on your circuit and you're not really paying attention you know you might plug the wrong thing in the wrong place and you know, fry a sensor. Like, it can happen. Like, I've seen it happen before, where you know someone swapped the pins on a polarized cap and melted a jumper wire because they they were working at like three in the morning and they weren't paying attention to what they were doing. This is not for this class. Obviously, this was for an external org, but you get the point. Like, you know, you you are working with electricity. You are working with power. You know, be kind of mindful of what you're doing and, and keep these consistent labels. Uh, for your own sake, otherwise you're going to run into whole all sorts of issues. Like, you know, not even nothing fries, but stuff isn't going to work if it's not wired correctly. All right, so we have LEDs. You have four colors: yellow, red, blue, green. Uh, this is your battery. Uh, so this will be uh, especially used later on in the class when we start getting into uh, Bluetooth and wireless communication. You know, at that point, you're not really going to be connected to your computer anymore. You're going to, you know, you'll deploy your code, but then afterwards, you're going to unplug and you're going to maybe move around. And so, this battery will help keep your spark fun powered. Yep, so this is the battery, and you see this kind of connection here. The nice thing about these connectors is that they're the way they're in the way they're designed. You can't really flip the connection. You can't plug it in the wrong way. Uh, let's see here. So this is going to be your micro USB cable. So this is how you'll connect your Spark Fun Thing Plus to your computer you know, to deploy code, or let's say you want to print stuff on the serial monitor, or the serial plotter. And then this is how you'll do it. So you'll plug this end in here. You know, this end into your computer. All right, and we're almost done. So our last part. So this is a jumper wire kit. Uh, so you'll notice it's a little different than what you may have worked with in the past. Uh, normally, when you know jump with jumper wires, it's you know those cables with little pins that you kind of plug in, you know, go across. These are a little different. Uh, so you'll see they're kind of the conventional wire, solid core, and the way these work is so. Can I go here? Let's say I grab an orange one. I can go here, in this corner here, push that guy in, and here, and push down, and now I have a flat wire across. And so that's the benefit uh, to these kind of jumper wires. It makes for really clean wiring. You, know, you can still bend them and curve them if you need to, 
but you know these wires will keep routing clean on your breadboard and well, more importantly when let's say you, know, you hit issues with your sensors that you need to debug because you know that's inevitable no matter the class no matter whether it's school or work you know things need to be debugged these wiring uh, this wiring scheme will kind of will help you follow your your route your traces and kind of see okay what's plugged in where you know how is power flowing like these wires make it a lot easier well when you have conventional jumper cables you know they're looping and jumping all over the place and it becomes a mess this will keep it clean and easy to follow and as you can see that's it so this is everything that you should expect to see in your kit from Eureka Leap if for any reason uh, these parts aren't included please let us know and we'll make sure that Eureka Leap gets you uh, whatever is missing from the kit and all right so now that's it for our unboxing video you know if you have any questions you can reach out to us and uh yeah i hope you're i hope you enjoy it i think it's going to be a fun quarter all right i'll see you in the next video